the top 10 best horror pulp magazine covers. When I was growing up at my um, uncle's house, uh, there was a stack of, of horror pulp magazines from the 20s, 30s, and 40s. And I went through and basically looked at thousands of these and picked out what I thought the 10 scariest ones to me were. And uh, as I wrote this, I actually learned a lot about myself. And I'm not going to read them all. Uh, have marriage issues. But anyway, um, so but I printed these out. They probably look better from the back. They're a little bit dithery up here. Uh, but this is number one. This was Terror Tales 1935. And the, what made this one great for me is it's got almost everything going for it. It's got a death in a boat behind with an oar. Um, hands coming from a bloody pool of blood, a woman scantily clad, which I found it as a requirement for a Hulk cover. And uh, what I wrote with was this was a terrific cover with undead hands pulling an innocent woman into a pool of blood while death watches. This cover has it all. The inevitability of pain, death, and the realization that there is no escape for any of us. If I had seen this on the newsstand as a kid, I would have bought it in a heartbeat. Especially the 14-year-old in me. Above, above, all that blood. Try not to scream, my dear. This will teach you not to fall in love with a stranger. Okay? What I wondered is, why didn't she go home when the bar closed? <laughs> Um, I'm not gonna, I'm gonna do, somebody said they're gonna prune these, I'm gonna prune these down too. Uh, this was an Uncanny Tales, which I think is just really iconic for Halloween. It's got everything that really makes it scary. Um, this one uh, got me aroused, actually. Uh, this is Weird Tales, my wife is here. She, she agreed, she almost wore this mask tonight for me. Um, back row, here we go. Okay, Weird Tales, this is October 1933. Okay. It says, I really shouldn't have to explain why the 13-year-old boy still inside of me would be drawn to this cover. Hey, this woman is frighteningly attractive. In fact, this woman looks exactly like someone you could meet today, especially the leather, at a Halloween bash anywhere on the Sunset Strip here in Hollywood. When I see these alluring eyes and blood-red lips, I have to admit I would offer my neck at a minimum. Please, please, bite me. Okay. Uh, this is Horror Stories, October 1935. This is another one of my favorites. Um, this is, if you can't really see it from the back, but it's really great. It's got basically a devil watching a woman being married to a troll by a priest who is blindfolded, has a noose around his neck, and a gun in his back. <laughs> the good news is, is her boyfriend, back row, her boyfriend is sneaking down the steps to save her. Okay, and my final line, you have to read the whole list, but it was perhaps her virginity is safe after all. Okay. Sinister Tales, 1940. Now I'll read this one because I happen to like this one. Here's another horrible marriage about to happen. Okay. Hmm, I picked two of these in a row. Perhaps I have marriage issues. Just ask any of my exes if you care to dig them up. What's great about this cover is it shows that half men can run complicated equipment like a buzz saw. The s and aspect, I assume that those are bridesmaids that are tied up, uh, lightens the mood, and in this cover there is no rescue show. Um, however, the overall cover, um, this woman is being sawn in half by a blade. Um, it begs the question, though, what good is half a bride on a wedding night? Um, this was a transitional cover that I found, which I really liked. It's from Ghost Magazine. It's from the or May 1931. It was really the transition from the Victorian uh, to the pulp magazine. So this one's still got um, a romantic aspect to it, uh, but it still is, you know, it's like he's breaking the news to her that his mother's not really dead or something. <laughs> um, or something, something worse. Uh, this is a very late cover from New Detective magazine. Um, and actually, I like this one because the name of the story is My Knife is Red. And he's holding, he's burning a pair of gloves. And basically, my final line was, if they don't fit, you must acquit. <laughs> um, Weird Tales, this is an H.P. Lovecraft issue, um, but it's got just a bunch of ghouls. And I actually used to live in Northern California. Who said the disparaging things about Northern California? That was <laughs> Professor Bloody. Uh, it, it's true. Uh, having lived up there, um, I came to the conclusion that this was the homeowners meeting at our suburban association, <laughs> which is why I live here now. Okay. 
the Phantom, uh, this is a, a very small magazine that wasn't around for very long. Um, I picked this one for two reasons. First, it's a classic and the illustration captures the feel of old monster films. And second, it's because how I visualize my wife and I um, if we were alive in the 1930s. What it is, is it's a husband and a wife looking at some books. He's a writer, obviously. And there's a ghost trying to get through the brick wall behind him. And uh, my, my idea here was, is that this is probably my ex-wife trying to come to get me or my ex-writing partners. And I said, gosh, where did all those great story ideas come from? It doesn't really matter. Their bones are behind the wall. Okay. And then finally, um, this cover from Weird Tales has everything, and it's got two demons wrestling, and basically um, every kind of creature that you could imagine uh, in the foreground underneath their feet. And I came to the conclusion that this is just simply an after-hours club down on the strip. Um, and then finally, I thought I would end up by saying what's fascinating about these covers is that many times uh, the covers were commissioned by the magazines, and the artists were given like a week or two to paint them. And then they would find a writer and they would say, we'll give you a half a cent a word and you've got a week, give us a story. And so many times the stories in the magazines had little to do with the covers. And uh, what made them pay off, of course, was uh, scantily clad women. Thank you. <laughs>